Hey everybody, welcome back to Napkin Physics. This is going to be part two of our CPR physics and the two theories on CPR. So we just went over the cardiac pump theory and now we're going to go over the thoracic pump theory. But just remember that we have to remember toilet paper my ass for all the valves and they had to be operational in the cardiac pump theory. So let's jump into the thoracic pump theory. Now what the thoracic pump theory states is that for systemic circulation to be perfused, you increase and decrease the thoracic cavity, which decreases and increases the cavities that uh, undersede those. So let's break that down. Now we have our coronal plane right here. If and what that means is we separate it into anterior. You separate your patient into anterior and posterior halves. So right here. This is your thoracic cavity, all right? Here is your pulmonic cavity, right here. And here is your cardiac cavity, right here, where your heart is, okay? And this is gonna be, represent our systemic circulation. So what they're stating is that when we increase pressure during CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, when we press on the chest, we are gonna in, increase pressure in our thoracic cavity, in our pulmonic cavity, in our cardiac cavity and that pressure is going to eject blood the, a lot like the same way the cardiac pump would into our systemic circulation and that's going to uh, increase it out here and that's how we perfuse our uh, our periphery but there's something to be held in, of importance and it really comes into the recoil of this so remember we said that the uh, cardiac pump theory states that all these have to be operational. Well, in the thoracic pump theory, none of these have to be operational in that they can just be free flowing. And these uh, venture, excuse me, these valves don't have to be operational at all. And they could just let blood pass right through and, and, and not have any repercussion for it. Now, what does that state for us? That means when we have that recoil, what's going to happen is that we're going to decrease pressure in our cardiac cavity, right? Right over our medial spinal cavity. And we're going to decrease pressure in our uh, pulmonary cavity, and then we're going to decrease pressure in our thoracic cavity. And what is that going to do? Well, that's going to create a negative pressure within inside our thorax, and that's going to push blood into our cardiac circulation. It's going to, it's going to in, uh, sort of pull it in to the right atrium, right ventricle. But what does that also mean? That also means that it's going to perfuse coronaries just like it did in the cardiac pump theory. So when we have that augmentation of that backflow in the arterial side of everything, that we are going to perfuse our heart that way. Now, the, this theory might be a little hard to wrap your head around. And the first time I heard it, it seemed a little crazy to me that both of these theories play off of the operational use of the tricuspid, pulmonic, mitral, and aortic valves. But that's what these theories really rely on. And there are amazing articles out there that go really into depth on how they tested to find both of these theories out. And even in 2014, they did an overview of all the research they had, and they still don't know which one of these theories holds up the most. So what I propose to everybody out there is the next time you're doing CPR, Figure out, you know, how can I measure this a little better? Which one of these uh, theories do I believe to be operational right now? Are all of hit, are all of the ventricles operational? You know, do they have a mechanical mitral valve? Do they have a mechanical tricuspid valve? Are all of them open? Am I perfusing coronary circulation right now? So there are amazing literature out there on there. This is a quick overview of the, both of the theories, thoracic pump theory and the cardiac pump theory. And like we did last time, if you guys want, take a quick snapshot of this. Let's say you get a hold of me and uh, you know have any questions, requests, or et cetera. Just get a hold of me any, any way you can. This is the medical textbook that I use, textbooks of medical physiology. It was amazing. This is an awesome uh, review of literature that actually – study that actually showed uh, the way blood flow works during CPR and I, I have this one and I, I really recommend everybody reading it. This one is the research overview from Elsevier in March 2014. So I hope that answered all of your questions and 
hopefully gave you some more questions that you can ask yourself and ask others what they think is actually happening with external cardiac massage during cardiac resuscitation. So again, thank you so very much. I wish you all the best. And remember to treat every patient like family. And I'll see you on the next one.